Welcome to lesson number eight in our series on the subject of Bible baptism. Uh, lesson eight is going to be dealing with what's wrong with denominational baptism. Uh, it is a question that is unsettled in the minds of many, and so this particular lesson is going to be examining or taking a closer look at some things that are wrong with one being baptized to get into a denomination. And so we'll jump right into our study. Notice, first of all, that denominational baptism overlooks the one baptism. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 4, Paul said, There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And so in this list of seven ones that was delivered by the Apostle Paul, you'll note in verse 5 that Paul said there is one baptism. That is, at the present, there is one baptism. We noticed in an earlier lesson, the Bible talks about a number of different baptisms. And when you look at those baptisms, they either belong to the past, present, and or future. And so, based on the baptism and uh, the context of that baptism, we come to learn that there is just one baptism, as Paul said in Ephesians 4 and in verse 5, at the present. Denominational churches teach that more than one baptism is for today. And so they'll teach baptisms such as the Holy Spirit baptism, fire baptism, or that one can be baptized by sprinkling or pouring. And so if a person is baptized other than by the one baptism of Ephesians 4, he simply has not been scripturally baptized. Notice, secondly, what's wrong with denominational baptism? Denominational baptism has the wrong teaching. Most denominations teach that baptism is really not essential to being saved. But one is baptized to show that he has been saved. Consider, uh, for example, this is from the standard manual for Baptist churches. And it reads, baptism is not essential to salvation. For our church utterly repudiates the dogma of baptismal regeneration. Furthermore, and baptism is to be on a profession of his faith in Christ on evidence of regeneration. Now, suppose one has been baptized with this kind of teaching. Has he or she been baptized properly? And the answer is no. That is after a study of the New Testament on the subject of Bible baptism. The Bible teaches that there is indeed uh, one baptism at the present. And the Bible teaches that baptism is essential to salvation. Jesus himself said in Mark 16, 16, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And the one who does not believe will not be baptized. And so in Mark 16, 16, the one that is saved is the one who believes and is baptized. A lot of churches teach that one can be baptized by sprinkling or pouring. Consider, for example, the discipline of the Methodist Church. It says, let every adult person and the parents of every child to be baptized have the choice of sprinkling, pouring, or immersion. We studied in an earlier lesson about the mode of baptism, the means of baptism, that it is clear that the New Testament teaches that the mode or method of New Testament baptism is that of immersion. In Romans chapter 6 and verses 4 and 5, Paul referred to it as a burial. If you have received baptism by sprinkling or pouring, you simply have not been scripturally baptized. Notice even furthermore, some denominations require that one be baptized in order to be a member of that particular denomination. And so the Baptist Church, the Baptist Church votes to receive said person in its fellowship on being baptized. Yet teaching baptism is not essential to salvation. I want you to notice here's an image of what the New Testament teaches. The New Testament teaches that there is just one body. 
1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. Of course, the one body is the church. And you can read such passages as Colossians 1 and verse 18. Also in Ephesians 4, 4, Paul said there's one body. The one body being the church. We learn in Ephesians 5 and 23 that Christ is the Savior of the body. That is the body of which he is the head over, of which he is the Savior of. The body or church that he promised to build in Matthew 16 and verse 18. Later in the New Testament, we learn in 2 Timothy 2.10 that salvation is in Christ. To be in Christ is to be in the one body. How do I get into Christ? Isn't that the pertinent question? If salvation is in Christ, and therefore those outside of Christ will be lost, the pertinent question is, how does one get into Christ? And the Bible says we're baptized into Christ where salvation is. Galatians 3.27, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In Acts 2.47, it says, and the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. What did they do that were being saved in Acts 2? And verse 41 says, they that gladly received his word were baptized. One cannot, cannot be taught wrong and baptized right. There's no way for this to happen. Notice thirdly, that denominational baptism has the wrong subjects. Many churches baptize those who think they are saved before baptism. Infants are often baptized and sometimes those not willing to repent of sins. In Acts 2 and verse 38, the Bible says that one is to be baptized for the remission of sins. And there is no biblical record of any infant being baptized, but rather that of men and women. There's no repentance, there's no forgiveness. Acts 17 and verse 30. And furthermore, when we think about those who are proper candidates, of which we've earlier studied about those who are proper candidates for baptism, we can give you a good summary at this point, that a proper candidate for Bible baptism is one who can be taught, infants can be taught, right? Those whose hearts are so hardened, they refuse to be taught. A proper candidate for Bible baptism is one who can be taught and has been taught, Matthew 28, 19, John 6, 44 through 45. Who furthermore can believe, not only are they taught, but that they believe in God, John 8 and 24. That they believe in Jesus. Mark 16, 16, he who believes. And who's willing to repent of his sins. That's a proper candidate for Bible baptism. The one who has been taught who can believe, and who's willing to repent. If you or I or anyone else has been baptized under the wrong conditions, he or she, we have not been scripturally baptized. Notice number four. What's wrong with denominational baptism? Denominational baptism reverses the divine order. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. God means what he says and says what he means. And when God says to do something, he means what he said. And if God says not to do a thing, he means it. And if God gives a prescribed manner of which one is to do a thing, God, it's God's intention that we do it as God has prescribed. You can start in Genesis and read through the Bible to appreciate that. And so some religious groups reverse the order of faith and repentance. They put repentance before faith, and this will not work. Faith is produced by the hearing of God's word. Romans 10 and verse 17. And one must hear. Or you would not know that he needed to repent. There are those that place salvation before baptism. And this is the wrong order. The Bible, the New Testament, does not place salvation before baptism. Matter of fact, the, the Bible order is faith. Repentance, confession, baptism, and then salvation. Start in Acts 2. Read Acts 2, Acts 8, Acts 9, Acts 10 and 11. Read Acts 16, Acts 18 and 19. Those are chapters that contain the various cases of conversion of an individual and or people. 
And you read those, every case, every single one of them from Acts 2 to 19. Every case of New Testament conversion puts salvation after baptism. There are no exceptions. None. And so if you've been baptized with the wrong order, you have not been scripturally baptized. Number five. What's wrong with denominational baptism? Denominational baptism teaches the wrong confession. Many are taught to confess whether they feel saved or to confess their sins. They're taught all kinds of things to confess. However, no one in the New Testament in becoming a Christian ever confessed his sins before being baptized. Folks in the New Testament, just read your Bible. Just read your Bible. Folks in the New Testament confess their faith in the Lord, not their sins. Notice in Matthew 10, 32. If you got your Bible, I'd encourage you to take it out and to just search the scriptures. Listen carefully to what Jesus said in Matthew 10, 32. Whosoever shall confess me. Jesus didn't say his sins, but rather shall confess me before men. Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. What did Jesus say about confessing one's sins in that passage? He didn't say anything. Paul said this in Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus. And shalt believe it. Shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart one believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Again. What did Jesus say in that passage about confessing one's sins? He didn't say anything. But rather he said to confess the Lord Jesus. Matter of fact, we've got a good example of the good confession being made. That is the proper confession. In the Ethiopian eunuch, in the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 37. He said, and I quote, just prior to being baptized. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What did the eunuch say about his sins? Nothing. He didn't say anything, and neither should we. Often there are those who look at 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. And you know, when you think about that in the context of Christians, is demanded of one who has not been baptized. Christians are told to confess their sins. One unto another. And so the confessing of sins is for the child of God who sins. Not for the one being baptized. Number six. What's wrong with denominational baptism? Denominational baptism has the wrong purpose. The purpose of denominational baptism is to get into a man-made organization Instead of the Lord's church. And so there are those who are taught. Many are taught. And believe that baptism is because of. Because they've already been forgiven. That's not what the Bible teaches. Because of their mission of sins. That they are saved before and without baptism. But that's contrary to New Testament teaching. Acts 2.38. Bible baptism is for the remission of sins. That is in order to obtain the remission of sins. Bible baptism is obedience so one can be added to the church. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. The Holy Spirit said in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be bond or free and have, have been all made to drink into the one spirit. When a man or woman has been properly taught and baptized. He or she is a member of the Lord's church, not a denomination. One has to join a denomination. We cannot join the Lord's church. For when we obey the gospel, just as is taught on the pages of the New Testament, the Lord adds us to the church before we have any time to join anything. Just study Acts chapter 2. Note Acts 2 and verse 47. And so since there is just one body, that one body being the Lord's church. When one is baptized into a denomination, he simply cannot be baptized into the one body, the church of Christ. Romans 16 and verse 16. Listen. Be attentive to God's word. It's critical. It is critical that one be baptized the Bible way. 
God means what he says. And when God gives a, a plan or an arrangement, when God specifies a thing, he means exactly what he specified. He takes serious the arrangement that he has set forth. And so you are encouraged, if you have not done so, to be baptized scripturally. Do it today. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2, that today is the day of salvation. Don't put off till tomorrow what you should do today. And so it's important that we open up our Bibles, we read and study. No matter the Bible subject, it is our sincere desire. It ought to be the heart's desire of every man to want to know what God has revealed. And what does God desire? Appreciate so much that you've joined us uh, for this lesson. Uh, Lord willing, next week in lesson number nine, we're going to be looking at the necessity of Bible baptism.